Amen. Come on in tonight. Hallelujah. We're going to get started. and There's some more still rolling in down out there. Amen. We're glad you're here tonight. Amen. We're just looking forward to an exciting night in the presence of God. We had an awesome service this morning. Amen. And we just uh, believe God's going to do even greater tonight. Amen. So uh, let's make some announcements real quick. Uh, there'll be no leadership meeting in the month of January. Prayer meeting January 8th at 7 o'clock. The media team be meeting January 13th at 5 o'clock. If you're interested in joining the media team, please attend this meeting. Uh, men's, and women's, minute, minute, men's and women's ministry meeting, January 24th at 6.30. Uh, then tonight's the last night to sign up for the Dave Ramsey Financial Peace University. Make sure you put your name back there on the list if you want to do it. We want you to do it. It's going to be beneficial to you. Uh, so make sure you do that, all right? All right, I think that's all the announcements that we got. Anybody remind me of anything else? All right, I think that's it. Uh, let's see. A prayer request tonight. We need to remember Chico and Savannah still. Brother Chico's still in the hospital. Uh, he still needs our prayers. Uh, remember him. Remember Essie and Karen. Uh, Essie's sick. Sister Karen's at home with, uh, with her. Uh, also remember Creed, his thumb. He needs the Lord to, to touch that thing. So y'all remember him. Um, also remember uh, Brother... Uh, Sam and Sister Shirley, they're, they're, they were fine today. They had a, a funeral to attend, uh, so we'll just continue to remember them. Brother Jackie, he called me on Wednesday, and he'd been sick, and I'm not sure if he's still not feeling well, so but let's keep Brother Jackie in prayer. Uh, remember him. Who else tonight's got a prayer request? Alice is sick, and Elizabeth also. Yes, John Caleb starts midnights tonight, so remember him, Sister Marilyn. Remember uh, Sister Marilyn's sister-in-law. Who else tonight's got a prayer request? Anybody else? Sister, go ahead, Sister Han. Yeah, remember Sister Cheryl. She's been sick this week, very sick, so remember her. She is home. Sister Jonna's family, remember them. Who else? Sister Ann? Okay, let's remember that. Also, Brother Corey Smith's grandmother, uh, I think he said it was maybe his step-grandmother, she, they called them into the hospital this morning at 2 o'clock, and they were there from 2. He called me about 8 o'clock this morning, and they, they were just leaving the hospital. She was at the point of death. So remember uh, his family, Sister Marilyn? Okay, remember Louie, he's been sick also. All right, all the unspoken requests by an uplifted hand. Let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Hallelujah. I'm just believing God's going to do some great things tonight, amen, in our service, and we hope that you are ready and, uh, to, uh, to receive what God has for us, amen? Let's just go to the Lord in prayer together tonight, and let's just pray uh, right now for these requests. Lord, we come to you tonight, God, thanking you, Lord, for this time to be in your house, Lord, to worship you, and God, we come to you, Lord, just lifting up your name tonight, God, for you are truly holy, and we come to you tonight, God, with our requests, God, you know each and every one, you knew them before they were even spoken, and God, we just ask ask you right now, God, to meet the needs of your people, Lord, and God, just meet them in a mighty way, God, and Lord, as you meet us here tonight in this place, God, we ask, Lord, that we must be obedient to your, to your power, Lord, and your moving upon us, God, Lord, that we just allow you to, to put us, Lord, where you want us, God, and Lord, that the windows of heaven be opened up and poured out upon each and every person, God, we ask, God, that you do everything in this service and everything be done in your name, and Lord, we'll give you praise for it in Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn around and wave at about five people. Tell them you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord. Then let's step on out of your seat. Let's worship God.
Come down, oh we 
years will take back the years that the enemy stole it. Lord, you are coming with a holy visitation. Oh, come on, do you believe it tonight? Jesus. Sound the alarm, awaken the watchmen, open their ears, let their voices be loud. We prophesy, you come in this nation, touch our generation with a hope.
praise in this house tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Choir, stay up here. Choir, stay up here. Turn around, come back. If you ain't made it all the way down, if you made it all the way around, turn around, come back. Amen. We're glad you're here tonight. Amen. How many of you know it's time to lift up the name of Jesus? Amen. So we're going to uh, right now take this opportunity to receive our tithes and offering. And uh, we just uh, thank God for all he's doing in our church. And, and uh, we're looking to expand and, and go and, and do what God's called us to do. Amen. And I know through, through your giving, you know that that's going to go towards that being done. Amen. So we just want to uh, take this opportunity tonight. So if you would, let's pray over tonight. God, we just thank you, Lord, for your uh, goodness and mercies on our life, God. And Lord, you've given us the ability, Lord, to give to your kingdom. And Lord, what you've required of us, God. And Lord, we know tonight, God, that will not turn back void, but God, it'll come back. And Lord, it'll be, Lord, some ten, some a hundred, Lord, whatever. Lord, we know, God, that it'll be awesome in your eyes, God. And we just give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Bring that on up. And Sister Linda McClure is going to sing tonight for us, I think. Give Sister Linda a big hand. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How many loves the Lord tonight? Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Father. He's a mighty, mighty God. <laughs> Y'all know this song, so you can help sing it. How many wants the Lord with them all the time? Day and night, night and day. Hallelujah. Bless your name, God. Thank you, Jesus. Look at your neighbor say, I love you. When's the last time you told your wife you loved her? When's the last time you told your husband you loved him? Your brother brother, sister, and then your real brother, sister in Christ. We'll walk around me, Jesus. Walk around, walk around me, Jesus. Walk around, walk around me, Jesus.
enjoyed that tonight. Amen? Amen. That was a good job. Hallelujah. We thank God for that. Amen? Sister Angie, are you still working on Bishop's message? You are? Do you need my help? Yes, you do. All right, good. That's all right. Brother Derek, will you get that uh, microphone out of that piano right there and bring it down here? And then a couple guys, Brother David and uh, Isaac, if you'll come help your dad get the podium real quick, please. I'm going to go back there and help them. Bishop, you're going to come on up here. Let's give Bishop a big hand, Bishop Larry McClure. Amen. As he comes to minister tonight, amen. He's going to bless you. And uh, we're going to, I'm going to get him going here in just a minute, and we'll, we'll get him taken care of. So, Well, I was going to have him sing, but he didn't bring his, he left his CD at home. Praise the Lord, somebody. Come on, let's give God some praise in the house. How many say he's worthy to be praised? Come on, if he's, been, if he's worthy, amen, you ought to lift up your hand, lift up your voice, and give God some praise, amen. You know, I was, she, we were singing that song, and I got to thinking about that little um, Puerto Rican lady that came to church here, Mama Evelyn. And we went, how many was up there? Was you up there, Sister Ann? My wife and I, was anybody else that's here? Anyway, we was up there. She she was dying. Do what, hon? Yeah, I know that. Some of her children was there. And uh, so we went up there. She was passing. And uh, we'd been singing and worshiping the Lord. And then a little while, she took a grasp and she died. This is loud, too loud for me. I don't know if it is for you all. Let me turn my hearing aids down then. But anyway, anyway uh, for at least 12 to 15 minutes, she never grasped. It was done, or it looked like it was done. It was over. And uh, all of a sudden, I'm telling you, that woman that hadn't been able to hardly move got up out of bed, come back to life, got up out of bed, and began to, she said, let's sing a song. Do you remember what it was, Sister Ann? I don't remember the name of the song, but, but she wanted us to sing it, and she sung it with us. And when she got through singing, she laid back down and went home to be with God. You know, I just felt like that was the Lord walking around eh, up there in that room with her. Amen. I've experienced several, several times of things like that taking place uh, in my experience with going to hospitals and being with people that were godly people. And there's nothing like God walking around. With God being there when you're there. How many knows when you're in that place, you can feel the presence of God? I mean, it, it's, it's not something. I mean, even the nurses and the doctors. Uh, I've been in the places when the nurses and the doctor come out crying. Who, who was that mama, sister? Who? Sister Ma Frazier. We called her Ma Frazier. And she was dying. And we went up there. Family had been called in. They took everybody out of the room. Wasn't nobody allowed to come in. But uh, the two nurses and the doctor, in a few minutes, they walked out. They were crying, all of them. And they said, we don't know what kind of language this woman's speaking in there. But said, when she died, she was speaking another language. <laughs> Amen. That, that, that'll just make a hair stand on your head to know that, that God will never forsake you nor leave you, but he'll be with you every step of the way. You know, God loves you so much, and so many times, I don't think we appreciate. I don't think we appreciate what he's done for us so many times. You know, some of you, I've seen Arlene and Richard, and their son got healed. And I've seen many of you, many times were sick, and God done things for you. Cancer was healed. Things took place, and, and sometimes we, we, we seem to come to church, and, and we lose sight of what God done for us because he pulled me out when nobody else could. I mean, they didn't have a winch big enough to pull me. I was stuck, but God pulled me out of that place I was in. And I think sometimes when we come to church that, that you know, we don't, we, we don't worship him and give him the glory that he deserves. You see, I, I don't know, but I'm thinking I'll just kind of start on my message a little bit because I wanted to say a few things before I started or before I began to preach it. And the title of my message tonight is 
honor, and respect. Now, when I was a boy and I grew up, my mom and daddy taught me to respect my elders. You can't respect without giving honor. Because if you can't respect somebody, you can't give them honor. And, and God, my mom and daddy taught me, they, they taught me to respect my grandparents. I was taught to respect and to honor my parents. I, I was taught when I was in church to honor God's house, to respect God's house. I mean, you know, I, I mean, back then the preacher would call you and tell you to sit down or go sit with your parents or come up here on the front row because you wasn't going, you wasn't going to sit back there and carry on a conversation. You wasn't going to have a conversation with somebody else. Come on, folks. I'm, I believe the church is, we've lost our respect and we, we don't honor God the way we ought to praise him and honor him. And, and I believe that, that it's, it's, it's gone into our children and our grandchildren. And now then our children and our grandchildren don't respect hardly anything because they haven't been taught to respect nor honor. I know my mom and daddy, we used to have people come to our house and they had children. And those children were, you could tell they wasn't taught anything or I, I, according to the way I was taught, okay? How many of you ever heard the word pilfer? How many of you ever heard that? Wave your hands so I can see you because that's, that's not a word a lot of people don't anymore don't know anything about. But my mama, them, them kids would come in and they would go to pilfering. That means that they begin to look in the drawers. They begin to move stuff around. You know, we got a bunch of people just comes to church and pilfers. They don't respect and they don't honor anything. You see, it's all about me. It's all about me. It's all about you. They don't respect. They don't honor. My mom and daddy always taught me, said, son, and my sister will tell you the same thing. Don't you go in that house and start pilfering. He said, when you get home, I will whip you. And I mean, when we went to that house, we didn't go into their drawer and see what they had in here, or see what they had over there and drug out this over here. We was taught to respect and to honor the people's homes that we went into because it was their home and they deserved respect and they deserved the honor. And so, but when we come to God's house anymore, I, I, I'm telling you, I, I am so sometimes I blush sitting in my seat when people carry on conversations while the man of God's trying to preach or even during worship. I don't know, what did you come for? What did you come here for? What did you bring to church? Many, many of us, what did you bring to church tonight? You see, we, we come in here and we come in with our heartaches and we come in here with, with what happened to us last week or we don't feel good or, or we don't have enough money. And, and so here we are at church and, and we're worried about all of this. But, you know, if you just learn to honor him, to respect him, if you'll come in here, what did we just get through saying? If he be lifted up. You see, when the church begins to do what God's called us to do. Oh, oh you ain't going to get in here with me, are you? But when you begin to do what God's called you to do, he didn't call you in here to whimper and whine and, and mope around and, and try to get somebody to feel sorry for you. My God, somebody said, oh, but you don't know how I'm feeling. You don't know. He told me in the word of God that it is finished. And so if it's finished and I hadn't got to come in here, I'm not a beggar. I'm not a freeloader. Come on, somebody. I'm not a hitchhiker. I come in here with my head held up. I come in here with respect. I come in here with honor. I come in here, amen, and to know that I've come this day for one reason, and that's to give God all the praise I can. Because if he be lifted up, all oh, men, you see, it's not about our program. It's about him. And when we begin to put him first and begin to honor him, watch out. The ears will be healed. The lame will walk. The blind will see. But we've got to honor him. What are you here for to, 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 to glean what you can glean? 
I was thinking, and I don't think I got it on, on my message, but I'll just go ahead and bring it out. I was going to anyway. But in Ruth chapter 1 and chapter 2, Naomi and her husband and two sons went down to Moab because of the famine. Got down there and her two sons, they found a couple of Moabitist women and married them. And while they was there, Naomi's husband died. And the two girls, Ruth and Orpha, if I said that right, their, her, their husbands died. You see, Moab is a people that are idol worshipers. But yet they had married into a family that were Israelite, Jewish people. And so Orpha said to Ruth, I'm going to go back to where I've come from. I'm going back to my house. And Ruth said, I'm going with Naomi. You, you see, somehow Naomi had touched Ruth, and Ruth had seen the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in her life. And so Ruth follows Naomi back to their land. Ruth told Naomi, where thou lost, I will lie. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. And where thou sleepeth, I will sleep. And, 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 and so, but Naomi said to Ruth, Don't, you, you can go back. He, she said, no, 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 no. I'm going with where you go. I'm going to stay with you. In other words, watch, listen. The problem today is that we don't recognize the person that we're talking to. Hello? Ruth recognized something in Naomi that she wanted. She knew she hadn't seen it in her land. Ruth hadn't seen it where she came from. But she saw it in the woman of God. And so she followed her. And when she got... Now listen to me, because you're not, if, you don't, if you don't listen, you ain't going to catch what I'm trying to give you. When, when Ruth and Naomi got there, Ruth went to Boaz's field. She didn't know Boaz. She, did, she didn't know. She, I don't think she'd ever met him. I know she hadn't. And so she went down to glean behind the gleaners. I'm just trying to give, give me, a, I've lost my, the name of, of uh, Boaz. And Boaz saw her in the field and said, who is this woman? And said, she's a Moabite. She came back with Naomi. When he saw her, he saw something in her. And he told, now listen, he told the men that was gleaning the fields Leave handfuls of purpose for her. You see, when you begin, when you begin to follow after the, the people and begin to, it's just like Sister Fraser and, and some of these other dear old folks that's going on. When you, you see the, the God in them. You see, God's got handfuls of purpose tonight for every one of us. But you know what? Why we miss it? Because we don't see. You see, if, if you don't, if you, you got to see past me. Amen. You got to see past Brother Jimmy. Come here, Brother Jimmy. You got to see past this black skin. Just, 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 just. You, you got to look past this because if all you see is a black man and you never recognize the God that's in him, You'll never be able to reap the handfuls of purpose that God has put in our life by sending him our way for a while. 
Are you listening to me? Amen. It's not about the color of your skin. It's not about how much money you make. It's about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And when you begin to, when you begin to respect, uh, amen, listen, do you know why most of us don't get the respect and the honor that we deserve? It's because you never respect or honor those around you. Huh? Y'all going to make me preach this message all by myself? You see, if, ever, if, if all you ever see is Larry McClure, you'll never glean what God's gift to me. When Jesus was in Jerusalem, why was it that the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all of the one, they, they never saw him as the son of God. They didn't recognize him. They still looking for the Messiah. But when he got out of Jerusalem, blinded eyes was open. The lame walk. 5,000 are being fed with just a few fishes and, and a couple of loaves of bread. Come on now, somebody. What's the difference, amen, in him in Jerusalem and when he was out there in the desert? There wasn't anything different about him, but it was because of their ability to receive him for who he was and what he had. You see, we look for the worst in people, and if people don't line up with what we think, how they, we think they ought to line up, then we don't respect them the way we ought to respect them. They can't give me anything. The Pharisees said to Jesus, because Jesus had said to them, I knew Abraham, your father. And, he, and, and they said to him, they said, how can you be in this age? We're older than you are, and we didn't know our father Abraham. He said, if you only knew who I was. You see, you could really see what, who, who, who I was. See, I was back there with Abraham when he was walking the earth. Why was it that, that blind, Bartimaeus, uh, blind Bartimaeus got healed? He began to cry out, son of David. He began to cry out and began to respect him, began to honor him. The whole crowd is walking this way, but one man gets his healing, amen, and gets his eyesight. Well, I don't know why I didn't get blessed tonight. Well, get your head out of the sand and get your arms in the air. What, what was it? What was it when, when, when Moses was standing on, on the top of the hill and there was a battle going on uh, below him and, and when he let his hands down, the battle began to go bad. Aaron and Hur went over and grabbed his hand and they helped him up. They respected the man of God for what he was, not who he was. And when they held his hands up, Set it over there. When they held his hands up, the battle began. They began to win. What was it? They honored. They honored the man of God. See, if all you ever see here is Marcus McClure as your pastor, he'll never be able to give you what God has for him because he's Larry McClure's son. I know this of a fact. You may not ever accept it, but I know this of a fact God called me. I know this of a fact that I hear from God. I know that for a fact. I may not hear him the way I used to hear him, but I still hear him. And see, the thing of it is, you don't know when I hear him and when I don't hear him, so you know you better pay attention when I'm trying to tell you something. Because it might be your miracle that God's trying to give you, but you, you can't see me, you can't see, you can't feel what I'm feeling or seeing what I'm seeing. That's why we, you, you know, I don't know if you understand a bishop or not, but Marcus is a pastor now, I'm the bishop. Now, come here, David. Marcus sees this. He's the pastor, right? He sees others. He's the pastor. 
But come here, Marcus. Stand there in front of David. It like this, face him? Or? Face him. You're the pastor. He, he's, the, he's the sheep. I just want to be a sheep. But the bishop stands back here. I'm no longer up there. But I stand back here and I'm seeing this when he's seeing that. Sometimes God's going to use this, amen, to bring a blessing, amen, in the house. It's not to it's not to overrun not to overrun the pastor, but it's something that I can see that he can't see because he's right here with you all. That's right. That's good. That's good. And we need somebody that has an oversight. That's right. Not tunnel vision. But sometimes we need somebody that can see. This morning God spoke to me. And I didn't obey God. I ought to have, but I didn't obey God. I, I just being frank with you. I kept praying God to show you. He did, but it, it wasn't me. It was you. <laughs> you. You see, I didn't want to interfere with the pastor. But God showed me four areas in this church in different spots in this church that there was confusion. And the Holy Spirit don't have to tell me this, but the Word of God tells me y'all can be seated. The Holy Spirit told me that the Word says, that came to me ex exactly, that confusions of the devil. There's people in the church and some here tonight that confusion is taken you, you see God said you know I'm late but maybe somebody's here God said that you thought that when 2019 got here that that was going to be behind you, that you didn't want to go into 2019 being bombarded by confusion. You're seeking a for direction, but you don't see the way because God said the way is made, but it's not time for you to move but I'm ready to move the confusion that you're not to go forth another day in confusion because it's not God's will. Right. You see, confusion will make you make choices that, you, that are wrong. It'll cause you to do things you ought not do and say things you ought not say and cause heartaches. And if that's you tonight, I'm, I'm just going with this. If that's you tonight, before we leave, we want to pray for you. Because God don't want you to go through another day or another week. And I'm going to share this, and I'm going to get back on this. I should have just stayed with it. But God showed me that there's some of you looking through a tear-stained glass. Because you stood at the window, and you've cried, and... And now then the windows are stained from tears. And when you look out, you can't see the sun the way you used to see it. And you feel withered. God's going to wipe away your tears and he's going to wipe and clean the window of your soul. That you can see again. That you can have hope again. That you can have joy. I'm just going to keep going. I may go with this. I may not. I don't know. Second Chronicles chapter 20. I'm just going by the Holy Spirit. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Now let me think now. 
His, his sister, is, is that where Hezekiah was surrounded, and Israel was surrounded by the Amalekites? Is it, let me see, it's, it's it, huh? Yeah, Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, all right. I, Jehoshaphat is surrounded by his enemies. And they don't know what to do. Let me tell you something. This year, if this church don't step up, if you don't step up and begin to honor God, you see, in Exodus chapter 20, I think it's seven or eight. I may miss it. He said, it's one of the Ten Commandments. He said, if you honor your father and mother, you shall have long life. You see, God's trying to teach us something in the commandments. When you begin to honor, you, you see, if you, if you want to find peace with your enemy, honor your enemy. Love your enemy. And watch, ha watch what happens. All of a sudden, they'll be coming and they'll be honoring you. You say, if you don't give honor, you ain't going to get honor. If all you're going to give is, is your mouth and your two cents, you're going to get your mouth and two cents. But if you'll give honor to whom honor is due, if you'll give honor to whom honor is due, this man of God... Now, I'm not just preaching because he's my son. I don't wouldn't care who was, who was there, amen, if it, if it was here and, I'm, and he was my pastor, I would tell you to honor him. Well, I don't like the way he preaches or he preaches. I, listen, it's not, it's not about that. It's about that we've come in here to honor the king of kings. Now, listen to me. I can't bring it up, so I'm going to have to go over here. It's on here. I want to show you something. Proverbs says this in chapter, chapter 18, verse 12. Pride first, then the, the crash. But humility... But humility is okay to honor. In other words, you, you, the problem is, you, you see, we, we think God owes us something. Well, I, you know, I've been going to church. I paid my tithes to that church, and I, I you know, I, I deserve this. I mean, I ought to get this from God. I mean, you know. I deserve that, do you? If he saved you, you ought to be happy. Thank you for that. Amen. Let me go on just a bit further. Humility. Humility means you come in low and you go out high. You don't come in here high because if you do, you're going to go out low. You got to bring yourself into humility and begin to respect and begin to honor. You, you see, folks, let me, let me, is, is this just a building? Yes, it's just a building, but we've put a name on it. We call it the house of God. We call it a place of worship. We call it a place where the word of God goes forth. But we don't honor nor respect it like we ought to because of the, the way we act, the way we think, and the things we do while services is going on, we're trying to reach a lost generation. While you're wanting to tickle, goo 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 goo. I love my grandchildren. Man, that Ava, she's the prettiest thing I ever seen. My Lord. 
I don't know how she come from our side of the family. But she did. And she just goos and gauze and grins. She's got me by the heart. But this is no place for me to play goo goo gaga. Oh, y'all, come on, don't look at me like that. But yes, after the service, go out there. Not in here. When you come in here, you come in here for one purpose and one purpose only, and that's to honor. You see, the thing of it is, if God really showed up in this house the way he used to show up, he'd take a whip because he said, you've made my house a spin of thieves. It's no longer a house of prayer. We got to teach our children to respect the house. Is that to sit down, shut up, and don't move? No, it's to sit down and be quiet until God gets a hold of you. It's okay to come up here and worship God. But it ain't okay just to come up here and play. You need to teach your kids, this ain't a playhouse. This is God's house. Oh, y'all need to come on up in here and help me. I, I, I know what you say. Well, why do you preach that? Well, you know, when everybody else ain't, I can't, I'm sorry. This is my opportunity. God give it to me. I got to use it. You see, if some of you, amen, would step up to the plate and be the loving Christian and concerned toward our children and to others, you would step up with love. And say, hey, listen, y- y- come here, come here. This is God's house. We got to train them. If we don't train them, they, 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 they go crazy as bats. Ain't that right, Brother David? Honor. Pastor, we got to bring honor back to this house. Man, we have some awesome worship. We have some awesome preaching, son. I can't believe you come from me. <laughs> but it did. I, I, I'm, I'm in your DNA or you're in my DNA. That's it. That's good enough for me. Listen to this. Let me take you somewhere. Be good. How come it's in a different version? I didn't put it on a different version. That wasn't your fault. That was a technical. A technical? Well, I can't read it up there. I don't see nothing but dots. <laughs> uh, it's, it's Romans chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. Can I go by them? Yes. Okay. I may not be able to read it. I don't know. I guess this is the way God wanted this thing to go tonight then. If everything else is not, is not lined up the way I wanted it lined up, this must be what God wanted out of me to help give to you, okay? Let's just take it for what it is, okay? God is saying, he's saying that, that all government is under him. He's the highest power. God's the highest power. But he's saying to you and I that we've got to give honor even to our government's power. You see, you need to quit complaining about Donald Trump and start praying for him. You need to quit worrying about Nancy Pelosi or whoever she Pelosi or whoever she is. Hey, man, you need to start praying for her. Are you listening to me? You got to give honor. To them, let me tell you something. How many know if you get out here and run down this road long enough, far enough at 80 miles an hour at a 55 mile an hour speed zone, you're going to get a ticket because it's a law that you drive up 50. So you got to you got to give way if you if you get caught speeding, get your ticket. Don't cuss and carry. Get your ticket and pay it and go on. You see, God sometimes has to give us a ticket. Because you're running ahead of him and not following him. 
Give honor to whom honor is due. We ain't going to go up there. I'll just, go, I'll just go here and it'll remind me where I'm at, I hope. My wife said to me today, I went home and put all this together. And she said, Daddy, you've been in this long enough. You don't have to have that. I said, well, you know, I feel like I do. Uh, somebody grab your Bible and look up Matthew chapter 10, verses 41, verse 42. And uh, you got your, then I want you to read it for me. Out of the King James. For, verse 41, verse 42, I think. Yeah, what baby? Let me see if I can see it. He that receiveth a prophet, are you listening? He that receiveth the prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. If you receive a prophet, or, listen to me. If the man gives you a word, get a hold of it. And if it don't fit somewhere down the road and it ain't working, don't worry about it. Just keep on going. But it could be that you're an entertaining, a prophet unaware. If you receive a prophet, and you give him a cup of water, we give him a cup of, you shall receive a prophet's reward. That, in other words, that's giving him honor. I, I, you know, I, you just don't understand. There's prophets still in the land. There's apostles in the land, teachers, evangelists, and pastors, bishops. They're still here. God, God created this, this circle. Everybody's not a bishop. Everybody's not a pastor. Everybody's not a prophet. Come on, y'all. But when you got a man of God, now, number one, if Marcus and I, of course, it'll be part Marcus now. If part Marcus, Parcus, uh, brings a man in here and he, he, he knows him as a prophet, then you need to listen to your pastor. And when the prophet begins to speak, open your ears and hear what the prophet's got to say. But see, if you won't honor him, if you won't respect him, you know what you'll do? You'll sit here and you'll find out everything that you don't like and nothing good that you do like. And you'll go out of here disappointed when God might have sent that man just for you. It might not have been a word for everybody in the house, but it might have been just for you. Go down to the river. He just sent the word. Just go down, Naaman, amen, to the river and, and dip seven times and, and you'll come up. Whole. But whoa, why have I got to go down here? Because the man of God, just go down there. Well, why, you gotta, why have you got to figure everything out? Just go down there, Naaman, and you'll get, you'll, you'll get your healing. Yeah, let me let me see. Uh, and he that receiveth the righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. Did I, is that forty one? Is that forty two? It's coming. Come on, forty two. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of, this, of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. Do you, can you get how awesome 
when you begin to respect and begin to honor somebody, and you know, it don't matter where they are. Listen to me. David honored Saul. When David had been anointed king for 25 years before he got to take the office of the king, he honored Saul. He could have killed Saul, but he just cut off his shirt tail. He could have killed Saul, but when Saul was being tormented by demons and devils, David went in and played his harp. You see, sometimes you just need somebody that can play a harp. You need somebody that can just have, just have enough respect on you not to kill you. I mean, you have the opportunity many times to get on the phone and kill somebody's ministry, amen, to try to, to, to lift your ministry. But I'm here to tell you, you're not a child of the most living God. You hear me? God never called us to tear down people. We've all sinned and we've all come short of the glory of God. There's not one among us, among us that hasn't sinned. And if you, if you have no sin, then you take the stone and you throw, be the first one to throw it. But sit down in your seat, amen, because we're all saved by the grace of God and we're all sinned and come short. You need to understand something. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about them. It's about him. And when we begin to honor him and, and, and magnify him, Lift up the name of Jesus. Tell it everywhere you go. Lift up the name of Jesus and let the whole world know. Service is starting. Be quiet. You ought to have done been to the bathroom. It's time now for us to open our mouths and give God the praise and honor him. And watch what happens to your children and your grandchildren. What happened? Watch what happens to you. All of a sudden, there's a stirring in the house. Come on, somebody. Do you want me to tell you something? There was two thieves, amen, that was hanging on a tree with Jesus, amen, beside him. Uh, he was in the, Jesus was in the middle. Of, and, and one of them said, you, you know, why are you complaining? You, we deserve to die. But he looked over and said to Jesus, Remember me. What was the difference? Somehow, through the agony and the pain, and being a thief all of his life, and now he's paying the ultimate price, recognizes something that the other thief could not recognize. And he said unto him, Remember me. And Jesus looked at him and said, This day thou shalt be with me in paradise. See, if you can't love the people that come through that door where they have no hair, green hair, purple hair, Stinking clothes, black skin, green skin, white skin. And you can't love them and you can't worship and try to help them, then you're not who you say you are. How? How can we sit on our seats? Now, I, I sit on my seat a lot now, and I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Because my knees hurt me so bad, I can't hardly stand up. And I, I lose my balance. I don't have balance anymore. I can't see like I used to see. I, I'm making excuses. But you know what? The other day, I'm sitting back here. And good old brother Jim D. Good old brother Jim D. come over to me. 
he leaned across this seat right here, and he said, Brother McClure, he said, can I be frank with you? I said, yeah. I said, if you want to be frank, I mean, you know, you don't have to be Jim D. You know, be frank. He said, why aren't you up here praying for these children? And it smashed me. I got enough strength to get up there and pray for them babies. I got up out of my seat and I went and prayed. And my God, God blessed me. We need, I need you too because I love you so much. I was, I, was, I was there when most of you was born. Married a bunch of you. Buried some of your parents. Grandparents. But listen. Today, they're up here praying. And I looked over and Jim D was sitting over in his chair. I'm walking around. I'm walking around with Brother Joe Klaub. I walked by Jim D. I said, Brother Jim D, can I be frank with you? Come on, that's what we need. That's it, come on. I said, what are you doing sitting back here? Can I be frank with you, David? What's wrong? It's not that bad. It's finished. It's done. God's got it in control. It may not look like you're going to work it out, but God's already worked it out. Just be patient. It's going to be okay. You may not understand it, but it's going to be okay. I don't know how it's going to end up, but it's in God's hands. I'm just trusting God. I, I don't know. Okay, God. If I lose it, I lose it, but God, I, I ain't going to lose you. How? I'm about through now. Everybody bow your heads right where you are. I don't want you to pray with me because I think we need to repent, including me. Fathers, we come before you. Oh, God. We've not honored you the way we really ought to honor you. God, we've sat on our seats, God, and we, we sit and we wonder, God, when our minds are confused and our lives are being tormented on every end. But tonight, God, I want to honor you like I've never honored you before, God. This in 2019, God, help me, God, to step out of my comfort zone. Father, I don't care what the people think about me. I want you to be pleased with me. And so today, God, tonight I make a new covenant with you, Lord. Yes. Stir me. Father, help us to walk in this new season with joy. Yes. Because it's the greatest opportunity that you've ever afforded a, a generation to be here in such a time as this. Help us not to squander it on petty things. It's not going to matter when we're dead and gone. Help us to pay attention to what you want in our lives. In Jesus' name. Now listen to me. I'm closing. A few months ago, I'm in Walmart and I'm walking out the door and I don't stay in most of the time. And I go on her for a few minutes and my knees hurt and I have to give me the keys. I'm going to the truck. I'm going to the truck and there's this great big black lady. And I kind of turned and she looked right at me. I knew she saw something. I didn't know what it but she did, and then she walked over before I got out the door. She said, you're a preacher, aren't you? She was walking with a walker. I said, yes, ma'am. I am. Um, you know what happened? 
I walked out the door. And I got to thinking, God, you sent her to me. And I failed you. I should have asked her right then, what do you want from God? I know that whatever you want and God's able to give it to you right there in the front door or just as you go out after you paid your bills. It'd been all right to have church there. You see, many times God puts you in position. You're Christian people. God puts you in positions to talk to somebody, to give somebody some hope that feels like they want to commit suicide. Are you listening to me? Don't miss the opportunity to honor God at Walmart or wherever you're at. And I want you to start praying this prayer. God, give me the discernment and the ability to recognize when you put people in my place for me to minister to, that I recognize it, not after I get home, but right there and right then. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Pastor Marcus, would you come? Amen. We love you. God bless you. Amen. So, I was sitting there and I was listening to a bishop preaching. One of the things, you could, you could play soft with Sister Ann if you'd like. Uh, I couldn't preach that message. You want to know why? Because you wouldn't receive it from me. Not that you wouldn't have received it as well. He, that's, that's why it's important that we, we listen and we understand why we have what we... Y'all, we're blessed. Amen. We're so blessed. Amen. And you know, how, you know how much we fail to see how blessed we are? So when you lose honor and respect... You lose vision and sight of how blessed you are. You no longer see it. Why don't you see it? Why, why does that happen? Because when you see, because you no longer see the goodness of things, all you see is the bad of things. You can't receive your miracle. Because there's no, see, it, it's way up there, y'all, and we put it way down here. Yeah, you're seeing man and you don't see God. It's way up here. And we put it way down here. And then we, we miss. See, the, the woman at Walmart, she, she was showing honor. She's seen it through, maybe she'd seen him somewhere. Maybe, maybe she, she just in her spirit, she felt the power of God through him. And she was honoring him. And at that point in time, she may have needed prayer and he may have missed it. But God still corrected him and he still received that correction and he honored God and said, okay, God, next time, if you allow it, I'm going to be obedient. And he will be. Honor and respect is so important that we teach it, that we receive it, that we do it. Not just y'all, but me. My, I'm, I'm, I'm just as guilty of it as you are, right? Why? Because I'm flesh. I do my best to show honor and respect to each and every one of you that I can because I know to receive honor, you must give honor. And to receive respect, you must give respect. It was a different message and everything, the way it all happened, I believe God orchestrated in that way. You might think, my Lord, my Lord, what a mess. But it wasn't a mess. It was, it was perfectly in line. It was out of our will and it was in God's hands. He, he, he orchestrated every bit of it from then on out for a purpose. Somebody needed to hear what Bishop had to say tonight. And he's prayed already, so let's stand together tonight. just want to come down here together tonight and just let's just stand together one last time before we leave before we close the service let's just pray together 
Just come on, everybody that's physically able tonight that can, I want you to come down to the front. God's doing something. We, we, we could all use a little help every now and then in our thinking and in our lives and our hearts. That's why I say I think we all just should come together and let's just pray. So let's just, if you would, just close your eyes, lift your hands, do whatever you want to do. As you honor God tonight and you respect Him for who He is, that He's got enough honor for you that He would say, today you will spend eternity in paradise with me. He loves you that much. He, can, he, he deserves the honor, the respect. Lord of God, right now we just ask you as we people, God, as we come before you, Lord, broken and God, just saying, God, help us. Lord, that we not lose sight of the honor and respect, that, Lord, we lose sight of all the goodness and the blessings that stand right in front of us each and every day. God, Lord, we do not miss it, God, but, Lord, we see it. And, Lord, God, that we receive it. And, God, that we be so thankful for all that you've provided, all that you've done. Help us as a church, God, to honor and respect and to love one another our brothers and our sisters in Christ, that, God, we show honor and love like we've never shown honor and love before. Lord, that we love one another like, God, like you loved us, as you've called us to love, to have the love of Christ. God, without the love of Christ, Lord, we're failing. And, God, today, help us to have the love of Christ. Lord, if there be any, there be any confusion, Lord, we speak to it. And, Lord, it has to leave right now because confusion is of the devil. Lord, that... There be nothing but love and understanding of the vision of God in our lives. And we just give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Did you enjoy Bishop tonight? Amen. Give Bishop a hand for being obedient to the Lord. He don't need that iPad. He's, he's been doing this long enough. He can do it without it. It's just a crutch. He thinks he needs it. Thirty-five, thirty no, thirty-six. About thirty-seven years he's been preaching. Cause he was it was thirty-four years when he's when he retired, and it's been two years since then, so it's thirty-six years here at the church. Amen. Love one another, honor one another, respect one another, honor, respect the house of God. I've preached that message. And watch what happens. See what happens. When we begin to do that, we begin to reverence the house of God. I preached a message on that not too long ago, about a year ago maybe now, reverencing the house of God, that it's the importance of reverencing the house of God. It causes the atmosphere to change. When we come in with a mindset already ready to worship, already ready to be respectful and honor God. Amen? Yes.